I'm Graham Jackson from Overland Passage. I've done lots of expeditions all over the world. One thing I'm very passionate about is actually trying to do something for the wild places that I love to explore. I think that's something that resonates with a lot of overlanders and people to do expeditions as well. We go and we take some things from those places, but it's really nice if we actually give something back to them. So what I've been doing is trying to organize my expeditions to include something that gives back to the area that I travel in. And our recent expedition to Belize, we were doing some science for local scientists in the area, for our archeologists and for some conservation organizations. But one thing I also wanted to do was to see if we could get a CO2 survey in the jungles of Belize. And that's something I have some expertise in because I work for a company that makes instrumentation that does that sort of thing. One thing I did was to take a Agilent Technologies 490 Micro GC with us on the trip. And the purpose of this instrument was to measure CO2 over time in the jungle. So basically you're looking at the respiration of the trees, you're looking at what the background CO2 level is. Most of the things that you see in the news are going to be CO2 surveys that have been done from either aerial surveys via aircraft or from satellites. Very, very few CO2 surveys are actually done on the ground in remote places. They are in urban areas, but not in remote places. And that's just because access and the ability to have the instrumentation on the ground in a remote area. So what we did in Belize is we took this Agilent Technologies 490 Micro GC with us. And what it did was to measure the different components in the air, including CO2. So let me explain a little bit about how it works. Basically, we were taking an air sample that was sucking in by a pump in the instrument through these tubes up here and they were sucking into the instrument every 15 minutes the instrument would analyze the air that we'd collected and over here we can see what a gas chromatograph does is it takes our whole mixed gas sample, which is basically air in this case, and then it separates out the individual gases that are within the air. So we all know that air is mostly oxygen and nitrogen. So on this first graph up here, we can see oxygen and nitrogen displayed. And then down at the bottom here on, on our different column, we are actually separating CO2 from the oxygen and nitrogen. So down here we can see what the CO2 level is. Every 15 minutes it would collect a sample, record it, and we would have our CO2 measurement over time across the transect of the jungle. And that was one of the science projects that I wanted to actually initiate on this trip to Belize. As a test bed for something in the future, it worked great. As a proof of concept of being able to do it for future expeditions, it worked great. And that's my plan. So now that I've got the instrument, it's got its location in the truck, it runs off 12 volts. We can just basically take this anywhere in the world that we want to and just collect CO2 data on the ground. We've partnered with a scientist at the Colorado State University who's an atmospheric scientist, and he's actually interested in seeing this data as we push it out. So that's one of the small ways that we're trying to give back to the awesome places that we go and explore.